over the last several years, I've gotten the chance to drive some awesome crossovers in SUVs. Even though they're as common on the roads these days as your local McDonald's or perhaps your favorite gas station stop, each one just seems to leave that much more of a lasting impression on me than the one I drove prior to it. But these days, even though I've driven so many of them, there are certain ones that have left such strong impressions that I could never forget them no matter how many times they've changed or no matter how many times I drive them. And one of the ones that sat at the top of my list over and over again, it is the Jeep Grand Cherokee. Boy, do I have some memories with those from the first time I rode in one back in the middle 90s with my friend's mom, all the way up to the first time I drove the psychotic Grand Cherokee Trackhawk. They never fail to leave a smile on my face but these days Grand Cherokee owners have been saying one thing and I've heard it over and over again they want that same trail rated driving style and performance but with a bit of extra space added to it well this week we've been driving around in Jeep's solution to that very problem because that is the all-new 2021 Jeep Grand Cherokee L So it's kind of ironic that it was just over four years ago to the day that I last was testing one of Jeep's products for a whole week. And even more ironic is the fact that that was, number one, a Grand Cherokee, albeit it was the five seat version, and it also was the Summit trim, just like what we have here. Now granted, there were a few differences between that one and this one. The most obvious being this one is over a foot longer with an extra row of seats in the back, and that one had a 5.7 liter Hemi V8, which you can still get in the Grand Cherokee L. Well, what I've got in this one here is what I think is the more sensible and definitely the more common engine choice. We have a 3.6 liter Pentastar V6, making 293 horsepower and 257 foot-pounds of torque. It's mated to an eight-speed automatic. I've got the Quadra Drive 2 four-wheel drive system underneath. And if you somewhat treat it nicely, you'll be looking at 18 miles per gallon in the city and 25 miles per gallon on the highway. And if you opt for the two-wheel drive model, with the six cylinder engine, you'll be looking at just 19 in the city and 26 on the highway. Now I'm sure this comes as no surprise, but driving the Grand Cherokee L or any big three row SUV does definitely have its drawbacks when it boils down to it. First thing, the gas mileage is kind of woeful. 18 in the city, 25 on the highway is somewhat kind of middle of the class i would say and a lot of six cylinder suvs that i've driven seem to achieve around the same thing 18 19 25 26 somewhere in there they all seem to fall in that category but that's mainly down to the fact that this thing weighs over 5,000 pounds as it sits right now with six cylinder engine up front and the four wheel drive system underneath and what that equates to despite the air suspension is a good bit more body roll. What I remember from the five seat Grand Cherokee is that it was a little more nimble. You could kind of pinpoint where you wanted it to go with relative ease. In this, it's more laid back, it's more relaxed. It feels like it's not urgent in any way, shape or form. The engine will sit at 1500 RPMs all day long at 60 miles an hour. And it feels like you're driving your living room sofa. It really is that soft and that comfortable. That said, when you poke it a little bit, it can still get up and move when you need it to. But let's face the facts here, guys. We're talking about a nearly $65,000 three-row SUV. And for that sort of money, you can get just about anything you could possibly imagine with up to seven seats and all the technology and luxury you could possibly want. 
you're talking everything from a Kia Telluride SX Prestige at about fifty-five dollars to $60,000 for one of those. You could be in a fully loaded Volkswagen Atlas. You could even be knocking on the door of Volvo XC90 money. So the question becomes, is it really worth that slight hike in price tag? Well, I would say that's up to you. For me personally, the luxury, the technology, the build quality, everything is way surpassing a lot of its competition. That said, however, $65,000 for a Jeep that's not a Wrangler Rubicon with all of the options sounds like a little bit much, but you just need to plunk your butt in the driver's seat, take one of these things for a spin, and I promise you, you'll start to realize why they charge as much as they do. But the question is, aside from the price tag and aside from the drive, does the rest of it really equal up to the $65,000 price tag? Well, let's head back to our favorite little spot and go figure that out. Now, despite what many of the Jeep purists might be saying already about this new three-row Grand Cherokee, there is no denying that seeing it here in the flesh in its diamond black pearl skin, this is by far and away, to me at least, the best looking, the most beautiful, and in this case, the most elegant Grand Cherokee that has ever been created. And like I was saying earlier, if you're looking for something like a Wagoneer or a Grand Wagoneer with its bigger road presence, its more beautiful looks, but you can't quite stretch to over a hundred grand in some cases you need to take a look at one of these and I mean you just look at it from the front you've got the bifunctional LED headlights here with the combination LED daytime running lights and turn signals that go across the top the LED daytime running lights are cool because when you unlock the car they actually sequentially go out to the edge of the light and then come all the way back in and then of course the headlights illuminate as well the summit gives you the metallic silver not only across the seven slot grill here but also as you can see across the bottom of the bumper. The Summit also carries a 360 around view monitor as standard equipment, even before you add the reserve group to it. And of course, we have sensors aplenty everywhere, not just the front and rear parking sensors, as you can see along the lower bumper there, but also things like the adaptive radar cruise control with stop and go, pedestrian and cyclist detection with emergency braking, intersection collision assist, full speed forward collision warning. I mean, the list goes on and on. So not only is this the most beautiful beautiful Grand Cherokee, but even just here at the front, this is quite possibly the most technologically advanced Grand Cherokee that has ever been made. Now, if size is your main complaint with the Grand Cherokee, then you need to look at the L version. Between this and its five-seat sibling, there is simply no comparison. On paper, the five-seater is about 191 and a half inches long at its biggest, versus this at a solid 205 inches from nose to tail. So like I said, if you want more space, the L is your answer. However, you also may be noticing from the side here that it's sitting a little bit lower than you would expect a Grand Cherokee to sit and that all goes back again to that quadra lift air suspension that I was talking about during the drive. When you shut this vehicle off, the four air suspension shocks actually lower themselves down into what's called entry and exit mode, which does exactly what it says. You are allowed to enter or exit the vehicle a little more easily. However, once you start driving, and it really doesn't take much, it jacks itself right back up in the air and becomes a little bit more like a normal Jeep. Now what's not so normal Jeep and what's definitely eye-catching is what is right here. The Summit Reserve Group set of 21 inch machine faced and painted aluminum alloy wheels. And contrast with the black, I mean, these look amazing. I love sort of the darker gray finish here on the painted surfaces with the machine face on the front, four wheel disc brakes underneath, as I said before, and we are riding on 275 45 series 21 inch Continental tires. When you look at it from the side, however, the Grand Cherokee doesn't exactly seem as curvy or as swoopy, I guess you might say, as some of the other competitors in the segment, but overall, it is just as technologically advanced as all the others. First of all, you will notice down here on the door, we have the new Grand Cherokee logo with a beautiful American flag right there at the end, and I'm sorry, that's kind of hard to see, but in terms of technology features, it's just like all the other high-end SUVs you would expect. First of all, body-colored side view mirrors, as you 
you can see with a nice little accent of silver again thanks to the summit pack you have the cameras underneath as a part of that 360 monitor they are power folding but not in the way you might expect if i lock or unlock the vehicle they don't do anything but on the inside of the driver's door on your mirror switch you can actually turn it around all the way to the back and you can fold these things in when the vehicle is switched on however as you would expect they were also equipped with an led turn signal on the side and blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert as we continue down to the side however this is one of my favorite pieces because look at the key to this thing it looks nothing like any jeep key i've ever held or felt before so much more premium and luxurious i love the lashings of chrome here on the sides definitely gives it a little bit more of an elegant feeling when you throw it on the table in front of your friends here of course it has all the features like unlock lock you can release the power tailgate and panic and of course in typical in typical jeep fashion it also comes equipped with a factory remote start. And because the entry and ignition into this car is completely keyless, all you have to do is have the key fob on your person as you would do, grab the handle, that's what unlocks the car. If you want to lock it, there's a little rib section here along the front edge of all four of the handles. And if perhaps at night you can't find your way into your Grand Cherokee, or at least up to it, there is a welcome lighting system, not only underneath the mirrors, but also right here behind the door handles, which allows you to see a little bit easier in darker spaces. Now, as if the front end of this Grand Cherokee L wasn't polarizing enough to look at, or even seeing it from the side, then take a look at this thing from the rear. It really completes this thing's elegant aura and the total package that this new Grand Cherokee represents. And you see it just in things like the taillights. They're much more slim. They're not so sort of thick and short like the ones on the five seat version. Not saying that's ugly, but I really like the way it's more curvaceous. You can definitely see how the tailgate is more rounded. Uh, again, adding to that extra length i would almost say the rear end reminds me of something like a mazda cx9 but at the same time i don't think that's quite as fair of a comparison considering we're dealing with as elegant of a vehicle as we are you have the summit badge down there in the lower right hand corner of course all your other badging like the jeep and the 4x4 and l badges in the lower corners you have three triggers here underneath or at least two there's one on the left of the backup camera here in the middle you can use that to lock the vehicle from the outside and you have your regular trunk latch right here on the far right on the bottom as you can see we have the sensors for the rear half of the parking sense system you also have more of the matte silver down there and two actually sizable and somewhat functional exhaust finishers down there now if you look in you can see that the pipe itself is right there at the exit so these aren't quite fully functional in terms of their size they're not the actual exhaust on here but overall i still think it really completes it as a whole Now, of course, as is the case when we open the tailgate of most three-row crossovers, you're greeted with a space that doesn't exactly look small, but then again, most three-row crossovers or SUVs don't seem to provide a whole lot of space behind the third row of seats. Now, yes, you could obviously go with something bigger if you're looking for not only a bigger vehicle, but more space in the back, but for what it's worth, the numbers on paper for this are actually really good. 17.2 cubic feet of space behind the third row of seats here. As you can see, I've got my laptop kit bag just for a little bit of demonstration purposes but the cool part is the rear seats here at least the third row are power operated and you also have a release for the second row of seats hidden right over here on the right hand side of the cargo compartment these first two buttons here release the third row of seats which as they fall and once they fall into place, you're looking at about 47 cubic feet of cargo space. But let's say you need a whole lot more. You can go ahead and drop the second row of seats from back here. And now all of a sudden you're looking at around 85 cubic feet of space, which like I said, isn't a class leader, but still, if you just take a look in there from the front seats back, there is more than enough room in here to fit really just about anything aside from a giant piece of furniture. When you actually get behind the wheel of the Grand Cherokee, I'm gonna tell you guys, this feels like one of the nicest places to be 
ever. And I'm saying that comparing it to a lot of other really nice high-end cars on the market. And yes, I know it's got quilted leather. You got the massage functions for the front seats, heated and ventilated, all that. You find that in a lot of high-end vehicles these days. But for a Grand Cherokee to look this nice and have just, I keep going back to it, that air of luxury, the feel of the build quality, how everything feels put together. It's just incredible sitting here knowing that I can look at the steering wheel and there's a Jeep badge glaring back at me. I mean, it just feels so beautiful just to touch everything in here. We've got metallic paddle shifters up here on the back of the wheel as well. Not something you usually find in a Grand Cherokee, uh, at least a lot more these days, but it's nice that Jeep has actually put that in there uh, to give you more control over the eight speed automatic. But even little things like the color match stitching here around the stitched airbag cover, this beautiful leather airbag cover, unbelievably gorgeous. And you look at the controls, like over here on the left, you have the aero pad that controls all the functions inside your full digital gauge cluster. Not something ever seen on a Grand Cherokee, at least a full digital one. I know they've had a partial digital one where the speedometer was digital, but the rest of it was analog. But you can even hold OK and you can even switch how it looks. So you have now a full digital uh, tachometer across the bottom, the digital speedometers right there, front and center in the middle, and then of course all your relevant information across the bottom. Uh, if you want things like to switch it from miles an hour to kilometers an hour, you can do that as well. You have a button that looks like the pages of a book and check this out. I can open that up. I have all the main information. I can put navigation full screen, just like maybe a VW or Audi virtual cockpit. I have all my relevant information, active safety systems, media, and even uh, controls for like the quadralift air suspension all at the touch of my fingertips. Normally you have to go everywhere around the interior to find that. You have hands-free Bluetooth. We're pretty familiar with that. And then all of the functions over here for like your adaptive cruise control to turn all the active sa safety systems on. Even once you get into the center console, the technology here is amazing. First of all, 10.1 inch screen here with the new Uconnect 5 full new telematic system. And even before you get to that, you have some buttons up here on the top, just underneath the air conditioning vents that you might fancy a little bit. Some of them are pretty obvious. Auto start, stop, turning that off, turning off the lane keep assist or lane departure warning, uh, turning off the traction, your hazard switch, turning on or off uh, the park assist or the um, the parking sensors front and rear. But this one right here is the real park assist. The one with the little steering wheel and the P on it, you push that, this car has an electric steering assist where basically you take control of the gear selection and the brakes and it will do the steering for you. It can parallel park or it can perpendicular park itself. And that's something you only really see on higher end vehicles like the Volvo XC90. And as much as I would love to go through all of the unique functions within the new Uconnect 5 system and this beautiful 10.1 inch screen, I'm really just gonna touch on the basics because there are so many things inside of this system that I could go through, it would take a video in and of itself. For right now though, let's just start with the home screen. As you can see, we do have a split screen function here. We have your Bluetooth media, all of your phone contacts, Bluetooth connectivity there, and you can see we have a split screen for the TomTom powered GPS navigation. Now you can blow that up full screen. You just touch the navigation button and the display is actually pretty nice. You can go from 3D to 2D, kind of an over the top design. It does everything exactly as you would expect. You have road sign recognition down here in the corner, which also shows up in the gauge cluster as well. Uh, but on top of that, we have things like the media function, of course, Bluetooth media streaming, Sirius XM satellite radio, AM, FM, and USB connectivity. You can go into comfort, uh, which basically allows you to uh, adjust all of the climate control control systems in here. Sometimes it takes a second or two for the screen to actually recognize what you've touched. And then you get into vehicle settings. There is an ambient lighting system inside of this car and it has two different zones in which you can pick the color. So you can basically pick it however you want or you can go all the way over in the corner, push sync, and then it allows the ambient lighting up on top which goes under the dash along the doors to be synchronized in color with the ones underneath the dash. Now my personal favorite is the dark blue. It is an absolutely gorgeous color. It looks fantastic at night. From the factory, I think it's a teal color, but either way, just absolutely awesome stuff going on in here. Last but not least, of course, we get to the apps page, which is right down here in the corner. Now, of course, this does have Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, and Amazon Alexa compatibilities in it. But I'm gonna go ahead and go back up here to media because I wanna focus on one of my all-time favorite aspects. You guys know me, I'm a music file, I love my tunes. But 
I've always been somewhat judgmental of sound systems, but when you have a sound system in here that is built by a home audio company, specifically one that builds audio systems costing over five figures in some cases, you know it's going to be good. And with the Summit Reserve Group, you may be able to see it down there in the corner, we have a 19 speaker Macintosh surround sound system. Now it's not Macintosh like your Apple uh, MacBook Pro at home, it is Macintosh, a Swedish company company that builds some of the best home audio systems in the in the business and when you push the volume button down here to listen to your favorite tunes well Now to those who might think that only the front occupants in one of these get to have all the luxuries, you need to spend some time back here. First of all, as you notice, I've got those rear sunshades up right now, it provides a nice little bit of shade. That is again, part of that luxury group five, uh, which gives you these in addition to the wireless charger. You notice the second row of seats is also only available as a bucket uh, or as a set of captain's chairs on the Summit model. Getting into the back, however, the floor is actually decently high enough, um, but at someone a little bit taller like me, you notice I don't have have the most optimal amount of room. Maybe that's because I'm sitting behind myself here. The back of the seat is nice and curved. You've got some nice leather bound map pockets in the back of each of the seat. And here in the middle is the rear half of that quad zone climate control. Now with heated and ventilated rear seats. You do have to go for the Summit Reserve Pack if you wanna get the ventilated rear seats. I kinda of wish that was a standard feature uh, instead of uh, having it as part of an options list. Um, but everything else, all the same controls that you find up in the front are back here as well. Uh, you do have four USB ports, or at least two USBs and two USB-Cs, as well as a 115 volt, 150 watt house style plug outlet in the back. Uh, if perhaps you wanna plug in like a laptop or a video game system or something like that, you can definitely plug that in down there as well. The benefit of the captain's chairs though is great because you have two nice size cup holders here in the middle. As you can see, I've got two bottles in there showing kind of what sizes you can fit. You also have two different style uh, center consoles. So the middle one here, uh, or the smaller one, uh, just lifts up like this. But if you reach around back, grab hold of the latch, pull it upright, it suddenly folds forward almost like a table. And if those bottles weren't there, it would fold flat. But this is where you have a lot more space to put all your stuff if you are a rear occupant. And of course, if you're looking to get into the third row of seats, first of all, you can either just grab this latch right here and fold the seat down, or you can actually push one of the buttons right here to fold the seat flat. These are buttons on both sides that allows you to fold either one of the seats down at your discretion. But if you wanna get in, just grab the latch on top, pull it forward, the seat tilts up and slides away. And trying to get into the back seat here, it's somewhat comfortable back here. I can actually fit pretty well. The seats are actually in their original positions. And from where I'm sitting, I don't feel like the back seat of this is only primarily meant for kids. You actually have USBs on either side, one USB and one USB-C, as you can see on each side of the back here. Nice little cup holder here for the kids as well. And even third row air vents, which is always nice because usually I'm suffocating when I'm in the back of a third row vehicle. Um, but other than that, I mean, it's actually not bad being back here in the third row. So even if you're over six feet, I would say you would still fit back here pretty comfortably.